Alright, in part two we're going to talk about a second method, which is the substitution method, and we do exactly, exactly that. We're going to be substituting in for particular variables. I'm going to look at number three, and I'm going to write my, since my first equation already has a variable solved for it, a y equals, I'm going to write my second equation, 2x plus 10y equals 4, and in place, since I know y equals this value, I'm going to substitute it for y in that position right there. So I rewrite the problem, 2x plus 10. I'm going to put a parenthesis where my y is at, and now I'm going to substitute that value in red right there. Now I'm going to simplify 2x plus distribute 10x plus 40 equals 4. I want to add like terms right here. 12x plus 40 equals 4. Get x by itself. So we continue and we have 12x equals negative 36. Divide both sides by 12. And we find out that x equals negative 3. Now we know the value of x, but we also need to know the value of y. So go back into my original equation up here, y equals x plus 4, and this time I'm going to substitute this value for x that we found right there. So now I have y equals, so I'll put a parenthesis, plus 4, and I'm substituting negative 3 in for x since we found that to be the answer, and we y equals 1. Now our answer is an ordered pair and I need to write it in order. Most important thing is make sure your x value comes first and then your y. This is the solution and when we were talking about these we said visually it looks like this and those two equations cross at the ordered pair negative 3, 1 if we were to see that in a graph. Okay, problem number 4 we're doing substitution as well. You look at the two equations and you find that this variable is already solved for x, so we're going to work with that one. Write this first equation down, 3x plus 15y equals 12. And now since we know x equals this value, I'm going to take that and substitute it in place of x. So I'm going to rewrite this equation and where x is at, I'm going to put a parenthesis and leave the rest of the equation exactly the same and now I'm going to make my substitution. Now we are just simply distributing 12 minus 15y plus 15y equals 12. Add like terms and these cancel each other out so we have 12 equals 12. Now this is one of our special cases where we lose a variable and we're just left with two numbers. This is a true statement, therefore it's always true. This is an all reals answer. Okay, all reals, sometimes known as infinitely many, means this is our third case in which two lines are on top of each other and they have many, many points in common. Set builder notation for an all real answer would be the ordered pair x, y, such that, and they'll usually take either one of the original equations, they'll either take this first one or the second one and put it to um, represent, so I'm just going to take the top one, 3x plus 15y equals 12. Okay, these all mean the same thing and that's the set builder notation for the solution. Our next method is going to be elimination, so we're going to try to make things eliminate. Uh, before we start this problem, I want to put it in standard form which and line up all the variables. So I want to rewrite it so that the x's are first, then the y's, and then the constants. So I'm going to rewrite equation number 1 as x plus 2y equals 9, and then leave the bottom one as 4x minus 2y equals one. Now once you have them set up, our goal is to see if one of the variables eliminate. If I was to add down right there, there's a known one, that would give me a 5x. If I was to add down, these would eliminate, 
and then I would have a constant. So this original problem from the beginning, when I add down, a variable eliminates, which is going to be our goal. So this is a very basic problem. We're going to um, work our way up. When I rewrote this, I see that automatically, whenever I add down, the y values eliminate. So I'm going to say 1 plus x, 1 plus 4 is 5x equals 10. Divide both sides by 5 and x equals 2. Well, once I find my x value, I still need to find my y value, so I'm going to go back and pick either one of the equations. I'll take the first equation. And I'm going to substitute 2 in for x right there. So I have 2y plus make my substitution. And now I'm going to solve for y. 2y equals 7, divide both sides by 2. And my answer is going to be y is 7 halves. Well, remember, we we're going to write it as an ordered pair, and we have to put our x value first, 2, and our y value is 7 halves. So we have an ordered pair solution. When, le when using elimination, I have many options, and many people can do different things in different routes and still get the same correct answer. The goal is to figure out what's easier. Is the x values easier to eliminate, or are the y values easier to eliminate? And each problem will be different. I can work with either or. And this one, I'm going to focus on my x values. I need them to eliminate each other when I add down. This is a 5, and this is a 15. If I can make this a negative 15, then they would cancel each other out. Well, how can I make 5 a negative 15? I can multiply it by negative 3, but I can't multiply just the 5. I have to multiply the entire equation. So this first step, I'm just going to make it a multiple, negative 15x, but I have to distribute, plus 12y equals negative 18. My second equation, I'm going to leave it exactly as it was. And now I add down. Well, those cancel just like I expected. But then also these cancel, which is just leaves me 0 on this side. And I add like terms over here, and I get 0 equals 2. This is one of our other special cases where our variables get lost again. So when we have no variable left, we have a false statement. If it is a false statement, it means it's never true, and our answer is no solution. Now, if I think back to what a, what a graph of a no solution looks like, I'll remember that that's when we had the parallel lines and we got no solution. So this is what the picture of it would be, and this is the algebra behind it.